Okay, looking at proportional reasoning, take 7.4D. We'll open that up, start working. It says on page one, Yvette uses six grams of tea leaves to make 24 fluid ounces of tea. Last week, she made 288 fluid ounces of tea. How many grams of tea leaves, oh, how many grams of tea leaves did Yvette use to make tea last week? Okay, two things we've got here. We've got grams, six of them, and we have fluid ounces, 24. I keep looking. I should have grams or fluid ounces listed again. Oh, here we go, fluid ounces. And then the question is, how many grams? So that's what I'm solving for. Anytime they're giving you three bits of info um, and you're solving for the fourth, I should be thinking proportion. And my two units of measurement are grams and fluid ounces. So I would simply just set it up this way. Grams are going to be my top numbers and fluid ounces will be my bottom numbers. Six grams, as I read, 24 ounces. 288 fluid ounces, and then 288 has to go on the bottom because of that label, right? This is my unknown. Anytime I can, I need to think, okay, is there an easy way to go from 24 to 288? Well, probably not. Um, can I simplify it? Let me think about, let's do that. Let's simplify. I can put six, okay, six and 24, six goes into six one time, and six into 24 is four times. Um, now four to 288, eh, not that great. But what about looking within a ratio? So arrow up, which means arrow up here. Ooh, that's nice. How do I change four into one? Divide by four. Over here, I would have to divide by four also. So the shortcut wasn't that great of a shortcut, but simplifying did make my number smaller. So that's gonna make my division a little easier. 288 divided by four. Now, before I do that, let me explain that you could also cross multiply, right? Do the butterfly method. That would be 24x equals whatever 288 is times 6. Then you would divide by 24. I think that's harder just because the numbers are so big. And there are more steps sometimes, and so you can end up making a mistake. Um, 4 into 2 is 0, but 4 into 28 is exactly 7 times. And look, I can stop now because... There's only one answer choice that uh, starts with a 7, but I'll prove it. 28, subtract, and then 4 into 8 is twice. Ta-da! Letter C. Very nice. Okay, number 30 on this page, 7-4-D. A boat traveled 27 miles in two hours. At this rate, how many miles will the boat travel in a half hour? Okay, so we're traveling 27 miles in two hours. And then it says at this rate, so we are looking at rates. It says how many miles will the boat travel in this amount of time? Two things. We have miles and we have hours. I'm going to use those as my labels. Miles on top, hours on bottom. And as I read, I know that these two things go together. So 27 miles is on top, two hours is on bottom. And then it says how many miles, that's my unknown. Will the boat travel in a half hour? So instead of using half, I'm going to use 0.5. Um, let's see. Is there a shortcut? How many twos? My arrow has to go this way. But how many twos to make a half? That's going to be division. That's not that easy. Um, and then same thing with 2 to 27. I don't think it's like 13. And, oh, it's 13 and a half. But either way, let's, let's solve the old-fashioned way, okay? This says 27 times 0.5. That's the same thing as multiplying 27 times 5. That's 35, 10 plus 313. Introduce your decimal back into your problem. And this says zero numbers after my decimal and one number after my decimal, which means I need one number after my decimal here. So 13.5. I can put that on either side of my equal sign. doesn't matter. The other side of my equal sign will have 2x, 2x like that. Okay, now I need to go ahead and divide by 2. I divide by 2. Now, look at what happened here. 13 and a half is an answer choice. 
that's not going to be good anymore. And we already know that obviously 24 and a half is not going to be good. So do this division. Half of 13, even if I don't know for sure, it's closer to 6 than it is to 3. So my answer is G.